we went from 1,095 people a game to over 1,500 a game in one year period of time. Wow. <laughs> and and the team's record essentially didn't change. Um, it was the fact that we promoted the, the new video board and sound system that we had. We were able to draw in and do special events as a result of that. Hello and welcome to the Dactronics Experience Podcast. I'm Justin Oxner here with Matt Anderson. Today we're joined by Paul Plinsky, Athletic Director for Colorado State University Pueblo. He's going to talk about some projects they've done for their football stadium, multi-use arena, and baseball venue. And we're here today with Paul. Paul, how are you doing? I'm doing great, guys. How are you? Thank you for having me this this uh, this great day. Yeah, I, I think we're doing pretty good over here. Matt, how are you doing? I'm doing good, Justin. Thank you. Okay, Paul, can we start with what Matt would say was your origin story? <laughs> yep. Um, and can you tell us about your background and how did you work your way into your current position? Absolutely. So, you know, I grew up in Minneapolis, Minnesota. My dad was a a high school football and basketball coach. And I had the opportunity to watch him, you know, go through what it's like to win outstanding games and have heartfelt losses. Um, and so I, I grew an affinity for what it's like to be, you know, 24 seven in the college ranks and um, really grew a great appreciation for it. So then I went to Bethel university in St. Paul, Minnesota, where I got my bachelor's degree. I had the opportunity to play both football and basketball uh, once I was finished with that, I had had the the great fortune of going to the University of Illinois to work in their football program. Uh, Lou Tepper was the head football coach, and I was one of the recruiting graduate assistants under his umbrella and had the chance to watch what a BCS Division One Power Five uh, football program looks like. Um, after I got my master's degree at Illinois, I went to the University of Minnesota and uh, was there for, for three years working on my PhD. So at the age of 29, I became a, a, uh, a doctor. Um, from there, I went to the University of Wisconsin La Crosse, a Division three school, which really felt at home to me because of my background as a Division three student athlete. Uh, I worked as the Associate Athletic Director there for five years. And then at uh, the age of 34, I became the Athletic Director at University of Wisconsin Whitewater. And uh, so I was at Whitewater for nine years and then ended up meeting my wife during that time. Uh, we got married, had two kids, and then the, the opportunity at the University of Nebraska Kearney came up as Division II school in, in the Mid-America Intercollegiate Athletic Association. So I moved from uh, Whitewater to Kearney, Nebraska. Okay. Stayed there for five years, and, and now I'm at CSU Pueblo. So I've been here now at Pueblo for two years, entering my third year. Wow. I, I just have to throw this out there really quick. My first year of college was at Kearney, Nebraska oh. before I transferred to SDSU <laughs> in, in South Dakota. But interesting, Kearney, Nebraska. Yeah. Yeah, I loved it there. It was a great town. Uh, my family really enjoyed it there. So pulling them from Nebraska to come over to Colorado was a little bit of a struggle. But now that we've been in Colorado for two years, we absolutely love it. The weather here is fantastic. The people are great. We spend our our off weekends um, going up into the mountains and doing lots of hiking. So it's been a really good move for us, and we've enjoyed every minute of it. Nice. And I've, I've talked to athletic directors before, you know, Paul, and it's 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 not, I wouldn't say it's a similar story, but, you know, it's always building up, going through different programs at different universities. And I always like to ask, though, so if you think about when you first got into this, versus where you're at now, like all the different universities you've been at, all the changes you've seen kind of, what, what, have, what have you learned the most kind of by, by trying out all these different positions at different levels? You know, what I've learned is that um, people are the same everywhere you go. And people are, there are really good people out there. Um, people are really good. It's, it's just a matter of getting into a position where you feel comfortable and you feel you're in, in your, your comfort zone. Um, I've really appreciated the Division two, Division three model of, of intercollegiate athletics compared to Division One, uh, That's not to say that I wouldn't go to Division One, but um, there's something to be said as an athletic director where you can wear many hats and you can interact with a lot of different people and really impact student-athletes in a real direct and significant way. 
So I've really enjoyed Division Two and Three athletics, um, and technically this is my my seventeenth year of doing so. So having that experience of of being you know in the grassroots with our student athletes, we have we have five hundred and eighty student athletes here at, at TSU Pueblo, <laughs> and I get to know a lot of them, and I get to see all of them compete on a weekly basis, and I just love it. And and yeah, at the same time, I can also have a personal life. I can also you know, do things with my family and take off if I need to, whereas it's not so cutthroat like you would see in Division One institutions. So um, people are the same, though, wherever you go, and it's just making the most of those relationships and utilizing those those uh, interactions to help advance the, the department that you work for. That's the primary goal. Okay, yeah, and you said you wear a lot of different hats. I'm curious, obviously, this year is a little different, but what's a typical day like for you? Well, I got to get my workout in, so I start that <laughs> at the crack of dawn. There you go. Um, and so that that kind of kicks the day off, and then I get my girls off to school, and then I'm in the office usually about seven fifteen every day, and I'll go until about five five thirty. Um, and now it's just you know with this coronavirus pandemic we're in, it's just it's different times. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really a struggle. I mean, I've it's been hard. Um, with all the change and what, with all the uncertainty and then the things that just happen so rapidly from day to day. But, um, I've tried to continue my routine of, you know, seven fifteen to five, five thirty every day. Obviously we don't have sporting events going on right now, mm-hmm. but, um, when we do have activities with our coaches, you know, I'm, I'm, or with other external constituents or even on our campus, I'm on uh, president's cabinet. So we have several meetings, uh, each week that we'll have to be a part of there. And so I'm, you know, constantly involved in Zoom meetings or interactions with people or, you know, just working on little tasks that are a part of responding to what's going on in our culture right now. So we're doing a lot with social injustice issues within our athletic department. Um, We are also trying to plan for the possibility of of practices and events and and things in the midst of the coronavirus. Um, But, you know, as an athletic director wearing many hats, we still have to do fundraising. We still have to manage our budget. We still Mm -hmm. have to schedule events. We still have to address compliance. Uh, We still have to deal with sports information and media um, communication. Uh, We still have to, um, you know, plan for the possibility of having competition someday. And and with competitions means you have to have facilities that are are, um, state-of-the-art and first class. And so we've been working on those as we speak. Uh, kind of during this little bit of a lull, but it's been good, um, challenging, but good because we're making steady progress and we believe that it's going to help us advance as an athletic department. Yeah. And you, you mentioned you have to have those venues ready to go. I mean, you're, you're doing a lot of different things and you're thinking about the athletes, you're thinking about fundraising, you're thinking about competing and, and the venue, like you said, is a part of that. Um, could we maybe talk a about the uh, installations that you've done recently. I think um, there was one a couple of years ago that you did at the football stadium. Yeah, that's right. So, you know, I'll back you up a little bit here. I, I worked at University of Wisconsin Whitewater for nine years. And uh, during that time, we won over 115 football games. And we also had a span where we went to seven consecutive national championships. <laughs> wow. And, <laughs> and uh, we won four national titles while I was there, and I was fortunate to be able to hire, uh, you know, some some really great people. But but the the top of the line was Lance Leipold, and Coach Leipold is now at the University of Buffalo as the head coach there. Um, when I hired Lance in 2007, he came in and his first year won a national title. Um, he ended up winning 109 games and losing six, and winning <laughs> six national titles. Holy so, cow! Um, his record kind of precedes him. He's actually the the fastest coach in college football history to make it to 100 wins um, in his coaching career. And so he moved on to to the University of Buffalo. But but while we were together at Whitewater, um, he really pressed upon me the need to build facilities so that you're you're creating a wow factor for student athletes and especially during the recruitment process. And so at Whitewater, we made a real strong, bold commitment to advancing our facilities and, and building them up as much as we could. Well, at that time, I became um, familiar with Joey Halspice from Dactronic. Oh, I know Joey. Yep. And uh, Joey and I got pretty close and we talked a lot about vision and, and establishing, you know, different um, audiovisual looks that would really create the wow factor for student athletes. So we put in a video board at our football stadium. We put in a, a video board 
um, at uh, soccer and track and field. And then we put, we installed video boards in our, in our basketball arena. And so we did a lot of stuff kind of collaboratively. It was interesting though, because during that time, um, my, my dad and I uh, were talking because my dad is a graduate of South Dakota state in Brookings, South okay. Dakota. Oh. And he was teammates with Frank Kurtenbach. <laughs> okay. Frank, Frank was a long time Dactronics, you know, executive who had, who had been there a part of its original, original state to obviously now being one of the best foremost scoreboard companies in America. But, um, my dad made that small world connection to Frank and then Frank connected obviously to me. And then here we are putting in all these scoreboards, video boards and new sound systems with Joey Halsworth. And so, so long story short, um, you know, my affinity for Dactronics goes way back. And so now here I'm at CSU Pueblo, and uh, we have what's called the Nita and Eddie DeRose Thunder Bowl. It's a 6,500-seat stadium that actually has a capacity of 10,000 people. Well, initially, it just had a scoreboard. And um, and so back a couple of years ago, uh, CSU Fort Collins was, was moving from Hughes Stadium to a brand-new on-campus facility. And Chancellor Tony Frank said, hey, I'm going to send our video board from Hughes Stadium down to the Thunder Bowl in, in Pueblo. So we got a, a you know, a used, <laughs> but quite frankly, a brand new video board with a sound system that uh, is lights out. I mean, it's one of the best in Division II. Uh, you know, we, we do very well with our football attendance, and it has, it's a game changer for us. So we have the Venus, the Venus 7000. Obviously, it's an LED high definition board, but it's 28 feet tall and 48 feet wide. <laughs> um, I, I know there are competitors in Division Two that have bigger ones, but I don't think you could find a better place to watch uh, a football game and have home field advantage than you would at the Thunder Bowl with the new uh, Dactronics video board and sound system that we have. So it's off the charts, and it's just it's a wonderful addition to this venue. First, I'd like to go back. I love the Frank Curtinbach shout out because that was, <laughs> I uh, started Dactronics a little over 13 years ago as an intern. And it was because Frank came to do an intern recruiting trip at Northern State University where I went to college. And he, he, drew, he drew me in because at the time it was a free pizza if you listen to this presentation. So he brought in pizzas again, <laughs> presentation to me as a college student. I obviously went in there because it was free food. And then he, he talked about Dactronics and everything. And that's kind of how I ended up uh, getting hooked onto the company and coming down as well. But um, you, you've kind of, you've hit on this, Paul, and I, I always like this aspect and it's never to say that, you know, you're getting a new video board and it's not primarily just for sponsorship revenue, which is a big plus, right? If you don't have one prior, but you've talked about whether it's in, in Wisconsin or where you're at now, the recruiting side of it, right? So it's that you're starting to use it as a recruiting tool to help get better athletes then to help get a better record, more attendance, and then more sponsorships, right? So I don't know if it's when you're looking for a new video display, are you weighing in recruiting as much as sponsorship or how do you, how do you manage those two? Well, to me, it's, it's the total package. And, you know, what I've always appreciated about Dactronics is, is that, you know, it's a family atmosphere that's promoting the best quality that's out there with audiovisual components that campuses can use. And, you know, for us, we view our our investment in the Dactronics product as, as really a, an investment because we know there's going to be a return on that investment. And that investment is going to come, ball, come back in multiple factors. Um, you know, the wow factor for student athletes is huge. And as I mentioned before, you know, we have 580 student athletes in our varsity sport programs. Well, our football program this year in the midst of a pandemic is carrying 160 guys. Wow. And so when every one of those recruits would come onto campus, we turn on our Thundertron, the video board in the Thunder Bowl, and uh, we show highlights and we show different things that show the game day atmosphere here at CSU Pueblo. And it's a game changer because you can see the Thundertron from the road Okay. You can see it as you enter into the into the team meeting room and into the coaches' offices, and then obviously when you get on the field and have the effect of the sound system, uh, it's a dramatic game changer for us. And and so that's one variable that that really makes a difference for our football program and our campus, or and excuse me, and our campus as a whole. But then 
to take it a step further, um, we are regularly in the top 15 in Division II attendance. Uh, last year, we had seven games. We averaged over 6,095 people per game. And uh, we attribute a large part of that to the messaging, the, um, the production that we do on our video board. Uh, we have a full crew of people that are, are video sh- shooting video live and replays. Um, we have the sound effects that are going on, and it's just a, it's an outstanding place to be. And then as a result of our attendance, which is a result of the product of the student athletes bringing in, <laughs> we're able to attract more corporate sponsors. So everyone's asking me right now in the middle of this pandemic, how are you guys doing? And I'm like, look, our corporate sponsorships are up 33% because we've built relationships with people. They feel and trust that we're going to be engaging in some type of competitive experience sooner than later. And they know that we're doing more than just putting people in the seats. We're also impacting student athletes and we're giving them an experience to get a, 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 an education. So it's worked out really well for us. Um, and that's just one venue. I mean, that's just Thunderbolt, which has been really a, a prime spot for our campus and ultimately for our community. And I think you kind of alluded to this, but you'll be playing football this fall at some point, correct? So we're in the midst of practice, um, getting the, you know, getting everything off the ground, which all got delayed because of uh, conference uh, decision making that I was a part of. Um, there will be no conference or NCAA championship in Division Two to play for this year. So our focus is primarily on developing our student athletes through practice. Um, we're viewing this fall as a normal fall, even though we won't have, you know, 11 regular season games. Um, and then we're going to use the spring as a normal spring because our fall of 2021 is our chance to to make a run at a national championship. And we feel like anything we do in the spring could impact the fall in a negative manner. And so we're trying to keep things as normal as possible. Um, if a game comes along this fall or even one game in the spring, we'll entertain it. Uh, we'll see if it helps us meet that goal of, of getting to a national championship game. But, um, you know, we're looking right now at as, at as a developmental opportunity for our student athletes because we've also had student athletes that have opted out. They just said, you know, we don't feel like it's the right time for us to participate. And we've honored their scholarships. It's just that they're not a part of the program anymore. And so it's definitely a different time than we've experienced. Hopefully we can get in a game this fall, maybe two. Uh, if not, then no big deal. We'll move on to the spring and we'll get back into normal mode in the spring so that we can be ready for the fall of 2021. Awesome. And we, we've been talking about football and the fall sports coming up, maybe shift gears a little bit and talk about um, your arena. Cause I, I understand you also have some new uh, products and equipment that are in there, correct? Yeah. So Masari arena is a 4,397 seat indoor facility that's used for our men's and women's basketball, volleyball, and wrestling. Um, we also hold commencement and convocation in this a- arena, along with other special events that will contract with us. And so this past year, we uh, developed a strategic plan for the university. And one of the components was to enhance the arena with audiovisual equipment that would make convocation and commencement really high first class. And then it will allow our, our athletic events to be really at a high level, but then again, giving us a chance to go out and generate some more external revenue as um, by using the video board. And so we uh, put in a um, 11 and a half by 35 foot video board, high definition LED, uh, along with the new state of the art sound system. Uh, we put in four LED score tables that are used for volleyball and wrestling and, and uh, basketball. Um, when we put this this product in our arena, we did it right in the middle of the basketball and wrestling season. So they were finished in, in early part of December. Dactronics came in and had it installed and up and running for our first basketball game on like January 3rd. <laughs> so less less than a month, they were able to get this this huge video board installed, sound system uh, up and running. And and by the way, the video board is the largest in our conference. Mm-hmm. Um, it's and it's it's a game changer. The things that we can do in the Mistari Arena are are things we can't even do down at the Thunderbolt because of the the new technology that's come out. And uh, our fans are just 
you know, can't stop talking about the impact that the, the video board had. You know, just, and I went back and looked at some statistics. So when we compared the year before with attendance, we we went from 1,095 people a game to over 1,500 a game in one year period of time. Wow. And, and the team's record essentially didn't change. Um, it was the fact that we promoted the, the new video board and sound system that we had. We were able to draw in and do special events as a result of that. We were able to do live replays and or live shots and then replays um, throughout the game. Uh, and then we were able to show videos that really – uh, put an explanation point on on the the messaging that we're trying to do, and then our corporate sponsors loved it because there's better better exposure for them and more visibility. And so, the the unfortunate thing was the the pandemic hit us, and we had to shut yeah. the place down. We couldn't host a, a, a commencement event mm-hmm. uh, in May, and you know that would have been just lights out for our students who are graduating to be able to experience that. And unfortunately, they couldn't, but. Long story short, um, that venue received that upgrade, and it has been a fantastic addition to, to what we're trying to do here. And, and we're looking forward to doing something this fall, or if not, as soon as we can with winter sports. And I gotta, I gotta ask this, Paul, because I know we we get asked about you know sizes of displays and conferences. When you're looking at buying a display um, like this in the arena. Do you look across the conference? Has that ever come up to be able to have that? You know, it's it's essentially like a recruiting tool, right? To be able to say to to student athletes that, hey, we have the largest display in the conference right now, right? Well, I not only look across the conference, but I also look within our region, and mm-hmm. then, you know, and in certain sports, I look nationally, and so I know who has the best of the best, and and I can you know, put a, some feelers out there to see what we can afford and then to see what is feasible in actually the size of the venue. Mm-hmm. I'm not so sure we could have gone any bigger than, than uh, 35 feet wide. We just, it, there's just not enough wall space. And, um, and so for us, um, we definitely like the bragging rights um, and, and like to be able to express that to people. But we also, you know, want to make sure that it's a high quality product and we've never been disappointed with Vectronics. In fact, one of the things the president said to me, he said, you know, we were able to get university system support for the new video board and sound system. He says, and you, Paul, did not let us down one bit. And, you know, the product was on time. It was, it was under budget and everybody was happy. And so, now here we are moving forward and, and looking for our next project that happens to be a Dactronic product. <laughs> yeah, no, and that's great to hear to, to hear that everything went so well like that. And I think one thing that you, you mentioned there is something that a lot of people might not think of right away is you wanted to make sure that you don't think you could have gone any bigger because you didn't have enough wall space or it might not have fit the venue is a lot of people don't think of what size actually fits my venue correctly. And and some people think I want it as big as possible, but it could be too big or take up too much room. So it's kind of interesting to hear that perspective to say, we went with the the biggest in the conference, but it still fits in the venue and and looks good for what you were going for. Yeah. And that's where we got the experts from Dactronics involved. You know, we brought Eric Kane in um, and he helped us do a, a real good site analysis and then um, we brought in your sound tech uh, experts, and they were able to analyze what worked appropriately in the venue. And then they also analyzed our needs and what we were looking to do. It was it was a fantastic interaction. I mean, we brought all of our campus constituents into into play, from facilities to um, uh, the vice president to business and finance office to information technology. Uh, to all the people who are going to handle any, any of the branding or the marketing that we do. And and then Dactronics had several people that were involved and they just, we walked through a, you know, a partnership and developed a plan that was in our best interest and our best needs for the venue and its size and, and what our spectators and fans were looking for. And so when you take the Thunder Bowl and Masari Arena, we've been now able to argue with our campus, which we've won the argument is that, we believe in the sole source perspective of going to Dactronics as our sole source provider for video boards, simply because we know the product is ultimately reliable. We know we're going to get impeccable service, and we know that we're going to we're going to 
have consistency from one venue to the next so that our event managers aren't going crazy trying to figure out which system that they're using. And so it's been just ultimately a win-win-win all across the board for us to have Nactronics in these two venues. Yeah, and that's that's great to hear. And you mentioned the two venues. We've talked about football and then um, the arena. And there's another project for baseball coming up, correct? Can you tell us a little about that? Sure. And in fact, it's already it's already con- concluded. Um, okay. We don't, um, we don't have the, uh, the turf finished yet, um, mainly because we've got a snowstorm today that is with, <laughs> up, with about an inch that slowed them down. But, <laughs> but you know, in, in the midst of all of this, uh, we were able to go out and get $3.1 million in external support from our, uh, our key donors. And we put in a new scoreboard at baseball along with new artificial turf and you know, fencing and, and all of the sound system amenities and everything that's needed in the venue. But, um, you know, Dactronics was awesome because we didn't want to um, spend a lot of money. We wanted to get to a point where we could make the economy work well for our situation. And so we had a fixed size of the video board, of the scoreboard rather, that we had to stay in with relationship to the fence. And so Dactronics came in, measured the fence, measured the existing poles that we had for the old scoreboard and was, were able to retrofit a brand new scoreboard on top of an old scoreboard system um, and, and a, a base, a foundation base that we had within the our existing fence line. And I mean, it just worked awesome. And so it's a fixed digit scoreboard that was put in, but it was custom made to our our uh, preferences with corporate sponsorships and then with the, the name of the venue. So we really got, I mean, just got in a great spot there. I did not have to go out for bed. We were able to go sole source again with Nectronics and we got exactly what we wanted. So there are other projects that I have in mind on our campus and they all relate to, you know, audio visual needs and the scoreboard component is definitely going to be going right back to Nectronics. So that's where we're at right now. Yeah, I love the the scoreboard part because that's something I remember um, even as an intern explaining to customers sometimes is when they have an old scoreboard, right, and you're looking to upgrade is that new scoreboards, right, they require less power than probably the one that was there and they're lighter weight. So you talk about not having to either run power, but you're talking about using existing structures and things like that. And that can end up saving some money in the end, not having to redo all that. Yeah, that's the smartest way to go about it. And and that's the beauty of what Dactronics does. <clears throat> you know, first of all, they're incredibly personable. Second of all, they do it face to face. You know, they're not afraid to travel and get in people's um, on people's campuses and interact with people. And then they listen. I mean, they listen to the needs and the the interests and are able to value engineer something that creates a, a product that that the campus and the community at large just really fall in love with. So. We've been really happy and excited about our, our current state of affairs right now. That's awesome. And, you know, we've talked a lot of, I kind of mentioned audio a little bit, and we've been talking about the video display and the scoreboards. And I mean, just kind of overarching, maybe how important has a, a good audio system been at all these different venues? Well, I'm a believer in in the, the holistic approach to fan engagement. Um, I really believe that that fans come to an event and whether the, the home team wins or loses, um, you get an opportunity to leave an impression on them. Mm-hmm. And so for me, the, the impression is, is both the visual and the audio. Um, there are the, th- the other things that come along with the experience, you know, the touch, the, the taste, you know, all those kind of things that you get at a sporting venue. But um, the, the, the visual and the audio combined have to work in harmony. And when Dactronics decided years ago to incorporate the the audio component to their to their work, I think it was a big boost to, to our enterprise and to to sport management, if you will, because now fans could really feel comfortable. They would have, you know, sound that was clear, that was um, not muffled that had a good balance between bass and, and, and treble. It, it gave you an opportunity to, to hear the, the sound all over the stadium or all over the venue, not just in one location. Um, and, and then it could be multifaceted. It could be used for concerts. It could be used for com- uh, commencements. It could be used for sporting events and because there are different settings that need to be applied for each of those different types of um, events. And so 
you know, in athletics, we want our fans to leave with an impression. And and Dectronics has really hit the ball out of the park with this one when they add in the audio. It's just it makes the visual that e- that much better. And um, we've been really happy with it, and it's worked out really well. So we have that at, at, at so we can give a testament to that being the case at our football stadium, as well as our our basketball, volleyball, and wrestling arena. Yeah, and you talked about the football and the the arena and now baseball too. You've got um, Dactronics products at multiple locations. Um, just curious, from a service standpoint, I mean, you mentioned from a consistency and even control systems and, and working the system, but from a services standpoint, is that something that crossed your mind when going with Dactronics to know that there was the same um, service team for all those venues? Or, or what's your experience been with our service team? Well, it's really convenient and it it really alleviates a lot of stress when we have a we have a, an issue with a, a scoreboard or a sound system when we can make one phone call and literally less than 24 hours we can have somebody on our campus um, and, and there are certain situ- situations that may come up where we've got a troubleshoot on the on the day of a game but that's very very unlikely um, but for us, you know, we always will will practice on turning on the video board, the sound system, and testing it, you know, about a week before we run our first event, just to make sure. Um, you know, video boards, sound systems, there. It, it doesn't matter how good the system is. There's there's just still going to be kinks that have to be worked out, and and we will get to a spot at every year where where we'll be calling the the Dactronic service line, and we get unbelievable support. Um, and it could be right then and there on the spot, or it could be them driving down the day of or the next day. And um, that's been one of the beauties of it that has been really put my mind at ease as an athletic director. Because the last thing I want to have happen is we show up for a sporting event, the scoreboard of the sound system doesn't work, or it isn't compatible with each other. And and then then you have people complaining, or you just, you know, the student athletes ultimately are the ones that are impacted, and it's just not good for them. So, I'll say finger pointing is something I've heard a lot in the past. If someone maybe goes with a couple different providers as to, you know, my stuff's, my stuff's working fine. It's theirs, right? Instead of trying to fix the issue. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And that's, that, that's where we have one sole source and we can communicate with them and get our, our issues resolved like instantaneous. And that's, that's definitely the highlight of this whole thing is that we have one call to make and it gets completed, you know, right away. Awesome. And thinking about a kind of a way to wrap up this discussion today, Paul, you know, as, as we've all really missed college sports here with everything going on. Um, so as, as you and your university look to return, whenever that may be, what sticks out in your mind is something that you're really excited for? Well, <laughs> I just, you know, I, there's nothing like game day. And I know you guys experienced it in Brookings, South Dakota, when ESPN college game day came to your place <laughs> yep. and, and the, the roof was blown off and, and I mean, people just had an incredible experience, but you know, at smaller levels, we have college game day, just like everybody else does. And when you see, when you have the fans bringing that energy and they're, they're free to mingle with each other and they're free to tailgate and they're free to socialize and then move their way into the stadium. And then the football players run out on the field and you have the marching band and the cheer and the dance. I mean, there's nothing like that type of environment that, that you can experience in particularly in football, but I mean, I quite frankly experienced it in all of our sports and, and just to see the excitement and the energy in the student athletes is, is really what, what is what I miss most right now um, that we don't see. I mean, I've watched these games on TV the last couple of weeks and I'm, there's nobody in the stands or if they do, they're very limited crowds and mm-hmm. it's just, it's not the same. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, and so I've missed that a lot. And I'm hoping for our society that that, that can come soon, whether it's next couple of weeks, couple of months, or in 2021, no later. <laughs> but right. um, we definitely need it because there's something to be said about it that, are, that, that gives us that release, that, that experience of, of that energy and adrenaline that you can't get any other way. And so I'm hopeful for that really in the near future. Or like that, because it's 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 a combination too right now of the cooler weather, yeah. And in Brookings here, you know, we have high school and the college going, and sometimes in the morning you'll hear the marching band playing, right? And it's yeah. the it's the first thing that enters uh, my mind is is 
is football, tailgating, all that kind of stuff. So I, I definitely agree with you. I'm looking forward to the day we can do that again. Yeah, now now you're making me miss the marching band and, <laughs> and the entire game day experience of showing up on game day. I think we're all longing for that to return. <laughs> yep, and let's just keep our fingers crossed that we can see it sooner than later, you know? Right. Well, so, Paul, I want to say thank you for coming on and, and sharing your experiences with us and sharing about um, – your your venues and and your university it's been great to hear from you today well it's my pleasure and i can tell you right now that i'm a huge fan of dactronics i will will vouch for that to the day i die and i'm just ever thankful for their partnerships the relationships the quality the service um and really looking forward to seeing what kind of technological advances are made by your company and I'm excited to continue this journey together. Awesome. Thank you very much, Paul. All right. Thank you very much. Take care, guys. Yep, you too. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Dactronics Experience Podcast. Please subscribe at your favorite place to listen to podcasts to keep up with our latest episodes. 